Hey guys, Back Photographer here, and today we're going to be looking at how you can set up a super simple photo shoot and get some really nice photos out of it. So in this photo shoot, we're not going to do anything fancy with lights, we're not going to do anything fancy with costumes or with hair or anything like that. We're just looking at how to do a super simple photo shoot and still get some really nice results. So this sort of photo shoot is going to be perfect for you if you're just getting started in photography or if you haven't done that many photo shoots or maybe if you just don't have that much time to set up anything super elaborate. This is going to be a super quick thing to set up, super easy thing to shoot and you'll get some really nice results at the end of it as well. So first of all, I'd like to thank everybody that's going onto my videos, checking out the link to the raw files in the description of my videos, editing my photos and sending them back to me to have a look. I really do enjoy having a look at all of the edits that you've done on my photos and the link in the description of this video is also gonna have the raw files to this photo shoot. So make sure you check that out, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into this video. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at lighting, we're gonna be looking at composition and techniques in camera, we're gonna be looking at the camera equipment I used for these photos in this video, we're gonna be looking at settings, and then we're gonna jump into Photoshop and do all the post-production stuff as well, step by step. So first of all, let's talk about the components of this photo shoot. We have a model, and she chose her own outfit and also did her own makeup, so that's super simple. And we're using natural light, so we're not using any fancy lighting equipment, so that's super easy. And we're just shooting about an hour before sunset, so we get some beautiful golden light from the sun. And we've just found a nice open area with nothing obstructing, so there's no distracting things in the surroundings so we can get a nice blurry depth of field in the background with a sharp image which is the model in the foreground and shooting just before the sun goes down or just as the sun is coming up is a really great light source if you're using natural light for portraits because it means you're going to get a really nice soft even light throughout the area that you're in but it also means you're going to get a beautiful golden light coming from the sun that can act as a rim light if you're using backlight and it just warms up the entire image and makes for really beautiful portraits so let's talk about the equipment I used on this photo shoot. The camera body that I used is a Sony a7R2 and that's a full frame mirrorless camera. And I'm using a Sigma 50mm 1.4 for my lens. Now you don't have to use a 50mm 1.4, you could use a 50mm 1.8, you could use a 35mm 1.8, you could use a 24 to 70 2.8. Any of those would be great lenses, maybe an 85 1.4 or an 85 1.8 as well. I really like using primes for this sort of portraiture because you can get a really nice low aperture from that lens, which means you can get really blurry out of focus backgrounds. And often prime lenses are sharper than zoom lenses, so you get a really nice crisp, clean image and your model is nice and sharp. Now you can get nice clean and crisp images from zooms. 24 to 70 is a beautiful lens. Uh, 70 to 200, particularly the Canon 70 to 200 2.8 version two is a beautifully sharp lens. But for me, I really like using primes because of that beautiful depth of field. So I'm going to leave in the description a cheap 50 mil prime that you can use for a photo shoot like this. It's going to be a 50 mil 1.8 and it'll be the Canon version that I'll leave there, the Nikon version, and I'll leave a Sony version there as well. So that's pretty much everything I needed for equipment. So super, super simple. Now this is the photo that we're going to be looking at in particular and we're going to go through all of the technical details of the photo now. So as I said before, it was shot on a Sony a7R2 and a Sigma 50mm 1.4 lens. We are using an aperture of f1.4, a shutter speed of 1 320th of a second, and an ISO of 320. So let's talk about why I used these particular specs. I shot at an aperture of f1.4 because I really wanted to blow out the background and because it was going dark and we we're getting that beautiful golden light, when you shoot at a really low aperture, it really warms up the picture and makes beautiful yellow blobs of light in the background, which I think look fantastic. I shot at a shutter speed of 1 320th of a second because I wanted to uh, freeze any movement that the model um, had and it was a little bit windy so you could see um, her hair is a little bit it's got a bit of movement there but we were able to really uh, shut down any motion blur by shooting at 320 of a second so the reason i shot at an iso of 320 is because i really didn't want the model's hair to be blurry and because it was windy it was moving around a little bit so i just boosted the iso a little bit up so i could use a faster shutter speed and remove any motion blur and still get a nice clean crisp image because the iso is still quite low so let's look a little bit at the composition of this photo. As you can see, the model here is lying on a bench and we're using the length of the bench and the angle of the bench to sort of draw a leading line, which makes the whole photo a little bit more interesting. 
And you can see that the bench kind of ends about a third of the way up the image, and then there's another line that's cutting right across uh, through the model, which is like a walkway that's kind of blurred out. But you can see that that sort of diagonal line going from left to right, bottom to the top third, and then another line going through the middle kind of adds like a geometric sort of look to the image and just adds a little bit more of an interesting look to the photo. And you can see in the background there, we also have that beautiful gold light. Now I tried to make this photo nice and straight on, so the horizon was relatively straight, but at the same time, we've just made it a little bit angular because that way it makes the model look like she is more straight in the photo. Finally, we made sure that there was nothing close to the model in the background so that we could get some really nice separation from her and the background, making the background nice and blurry in comparison to her sharp body. So now let's jump into Photoshop and look at the editing process of this image. If you'd like to follow along, again, the link in the description is there with the raw files. So just click on that link, get the raw files, pop it into Photoshop and follow along. And once again, thank you very much for sending me your edited photos. I really do enjoy looking at them. So thank you again. Okay, so here we are with the photo. As you can see, there are a few little things that we can fix up. The first thing we're going to do is add a little bit of clarity just to make the entire image pop just something around 18 points. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some vibrance to the image, but you can see here that the image is starting to get a little bit blue. So we're just gonna add some warm color to the image as well, just adding a little bit of yellow. Just making sure that our model here, her face isn't looking strange. If we go too yellow, her face starts to look uh, very orange, but so we just gotta make sure to keep an eye on that as well. And what we actually might do uh, once we get the right color balance, yep, that's about right. We might just remove um, a little bit of the blue because you can see it's in the uh, in the bench and on the floor as well. And so we're just gonna remove a little bit, keeping some blue in here, but just removing it from the seat and from the ground. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to do a quick run through of skin uh, blurring and smoothing. What I like to do for this is just get the brush tool and drop down the exposure, drop down the shadows, and drop down the blacks as well. And what I'm doing here is just adding a masking tool basically so I can see where exactly I'm clicking. I'm gonna get rid of all of those exposure changes and stuff later. Just doing it so I can see exactly where I've clicked. So no guessing or anything like that. Know exactly what I'm clicking. So we're just gonna go through all the parts of the skin that we want to make a bit smoother. Just removing any blemishes or any dark parts or anything like that just for a quick run through. Now, if you wanted to you know, really go into detail with this photo and get rid of the blemishes the right way, this probably wouldn't be the way to do it, but this is a much quicker way, especially if you're just doing a rough quick pass and then you're gonna refine later, much quicker way to uh, smooth out the skin and just get rid of any blemishes first off. So I think that's pretty much all the areas we wanna do. Might just do this little bit here as well. And we'll just do her arms as well, actually, while we're here. So our model here is Storm and she is um, quite good in terms of her skin smoothness. So we don't really have to do anything too drastic. I'll leave a link to her Instagram in the description as well if anyone wants to check out a bit more of her work. She's uh, really good to work with, so definitely would recommend. All right, so that's pretty much everything I think we'll do. So now I'm just gonna get rid of all of those adjustments I made in the beginning. And we're just left with exactly the same image. But now what we're gonna do is just drop the clarity a little bit and make our skin a whole bunch smoother. We don't wanna to go too far. Um, that looks very strange indeed. And you can see it just gets rid of basically mid-tone contrast. And that's basically where all the blemishes live. So we're just gonna remove it uh, probably about 10 points. And then because we did lose a bit of exposure there, I might just boost up the exposure just very, very slightly. Okay, so that looks pretty good, I think. We'll do more smoothing a little bit later on as well. Okay, so now I'm just gonna add a little bit more clarity and a little bit more contrast uh, to Storm's eyes. And we might just leave the exposure for now and see how this looks. We're just using another tool, another brush, sorry, again, and just gonna make our eyes pop a little bit more. And actually, we'll add a little bit of exposure just to see how that looks. Yep, that looks pretty good. We don't wanna go well, actually, that's a little bit too much. We don't want to go crazy, give our model laser beam eyes here. So we'll just add a little bit. Maybe we'll drop down the clarity a little bit too. Eight points. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, great. So what else do we want to do to this photo? I might just add a little bit more blue back into the jeans, just because they're looking a little bit washed out at the moment. So we'll just add a little bit of saturation and just go over roughly and give a little bit more color 
back into those jeans. So just subtle changes here. We don't want to make the jeans look any, like crazy blue or anything like that, but just adding a little bit more color. Yep, I think that looks much better. Okay, so that's everything we're going to do in Camera Raw. Let's jump into Photoshop now. So when you're editing images, if that Camera Raw um, doesn't come up first, what you might be doing is shooting in JPEG instead of in the RAW file format. So you can change that in your camera, or what you can do is you can go Filter, and then click Camera Raw Filter, and that program will come up like that. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is this horizon here is looking a little bit bent, so we're just going to straighten that up like that. And we're losing a bit of a foot there. A foot is a little bit cropped out, but um, we're just going to uh, get that back in, and then we'll just bring this back up as well. And now you can see we've got a few little black things here, so uh, we're just going to remove those by using the selection tool like that, and then clicking delete. And because this uh, this layer is locked, uh, we're going to get the option to do a content aware fill. So when we click OK with that, it just uh, fills that out. And because now we have like a weird artifact here where that looks a little bit duplicated, I'm just going to delete that again and get a new pattern. So that looks good. We'll do the same thing for down here. And that looks pretty good. Another thing you can do if you don't want to do it that way is you can get an entire section like this and click right click pre-transform, right click, distort, and then you can just drag it over like that as well. But as you can see in the bottom, the, the line that kind of drags off um, into the corner where you can see where the bench stops and the concrete starts, if, if I do that sort of drag over, it starts to sort of skew it. So I'm not gonna do it that way. I'm gonna do the content deletion way because then that line doesn't get skewed. All right, so that's done there. What we'll do now is just remove any blemishes from our model's skin. So her skin's actually really good, so we're just gonna do a few little ones here and there just to smooth it off. Actually, we'll, we'll leave that one because that's not a blemish. And I'm just being really rough here with my, with my deletion, so you know, if, in the interest of time. We, I don't want to keep you guys on this video for 30 minutes of me just fixing skin. So we'll just do a quick pass just to smooth out any imperfections. And basically what I'm doing here is I'm just selecting an area that I want to remove. And then because we're, our layer is locked, we're doing the same content aware deletion we were doing before uh, on the corners of the image. You can also use this patch tool and then just circle an area you don't like and then drag it over and that will get rid of any blemishes as well. So we'll just do a couple more and then we'll just leave it at that. All right, I think that should be probably enough. Just do a few on the arms as well. There's a few freckles here and there we might just get rid of. Okay, that looks pretty good. So next thing we'll do is we'll just make Storm's hair a little bit fuller, a little bit thicker. Looks great as it is now, but I find that even just adding a little bit more fullness to uh, the hair of any model in any photo pretty much um, always just makes the photo look a little bit better. So we'll just do a little bit of um, poofing up as well on the hair. And when you do this, make sure you don't go crazy like that because obviously that looks pretty strange. We're just doing little micro adjustments here and there to make the photo look a little bit better. When you're liquefying hair, make sure not to get um, any of your model's face in the liquify tool. You can get a little bit of the corner in because uh, the way this tool works is the middle section gets affected the most, the middle part of the circle. Um, whereas if you look at the outskirts, they don't really change that much. Uh, so just try not to get your model's face in the circle too much, otherwise you'll distort it and make her look kind of strange. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it for the hair. Let's look at it before and after. Yeah, so as you can see, it really does make quite a big difference, just that little change. Okay, so I think actually that's everything that we're gonna do with this photo. So I hope you like it. Please do send me the photos um, that you edited as well. I really do enjoy looking at them and Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment down below as well if you have any comments about the photo, if you'd like to share your thoughts. And I've actually just started making merch as well. So I've got a link in the description uh, to a merch store and you can check that out. That would be really cool. I've got a link to all of the equipment I use as well. So make sure to check that out if you're looking to get any new equipment. I've also got a budget option in there for you as well for the lens for this photo shoot. If you're looking for something, um, a nice lens, but a low budget lens, uh, something that's really good bang for your buck. So once again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.